Hey, good morning. This is Ben with Studio on the Lake. Here's a quick little project to give you. This is a dishwasher tell, I guess, for lack of better reference. If the cone is up, this is stuck on the front of the dishwasher with magnets. Uh, the dishes are clean, and you can steal them out of there or put them in the cupboard. If it's down, uh, they're either being loaded or not washed. This is a good uh, example of how a project changes. You're going to see this in the middle. I am still working on the clock. There's a lot of detailed carving on that and occasionally uh, I want to get away from doing that. So you're going to see the next part of the clock. Uh, a lot of it's done. Uh, but this is just a something in the middle. It was quick. It took about an hour to do. Uh, and what's interesting about this project is how it changed right in the middle. First of all, I had no idea. I had a basic idea. I wanted a circle in the middle, an arrow of some sort that pointed up or down, be up being good to pull dishes out of there, rob fork or a plate, and down being don't bother. Uh, so I was going to cut the center circle out here. I thought and brainstormed and for all of about five minutes and couldn't think of any witty cute sayings to put on there nothing seemed to work so as you can see I wrote the word done on the top and not on the bottom and then I made kind of a smiley face arrow in the middle wasn't particularly pleased with that but uh, didn't know where else to go so I took it over on the scroll saw cut out the center and then I left a, a piece with a little bit more meat on the top of it so the arrow would be set up and then I start proceeded to carve that. Originally I was looking at that I didn't like the arrow I thought well an arrowhead would work out great so I put in kind of an arrowhead spear shape I started burning in the uh, flint where the flint would be napped away on an arrowhead that sort of thing and then as I got to going down through I thought you know what my wife likes pine cones and collects various different pine cones and I thought this stupid thing is starting to look like a pine cone so eventually you'll see me take that part under my left thumb there and make it go away and turn it into a complete arrowhead or I'm sorry uh, a pine cone so that part evolved already and it's a simple matter of coming back in various different passes like you've seen me do before I'll do a burn pass just to get a good pattern in there on the pencil in a lot of cases then I'll come back with a rough uh, saber burr usually or a cuts all and relief it a little bit same this kind of like carving bird feathers if you've ever seen me do a bird I uh, got this pretty much the same process no new tricks here so coming back, decision's been made that this is no longer just an, air, uh, an arrow and no longer an arrowhead. It's now a pine cone. So I'm coming back, putting a little bit of depth in there. Like I said, the clock is, is coming along nice. I've just about got the right side um, floral design, the grapes and the leaves and that sort of thing coming down. You'll see that video probably in the next three or four days. <coughs> and uh, I'm real happy with the way that that clock's coming out. I've been tracking a, a package that a uh, basswood, that uh, 40 pound package, I sent to Jordy up in Canada. It's uh, slowly making its way across Canada. It's got through customs and that sort of thing and uh, hopefully it'll be out for delivery. He's going to send me some cottonwood bark that he carves a lot of those uh, spirit faces in and that'll be kind of fun to play with. So there's the center button that's going to go on there. Ruby flame, uh, basically sanding, making this thing uh, rounded. You do get a bonus in this video. You, you actually get to see me paint and finish your piece 
as I said, this this took about an hour, maybe two hours. I, I don't particularly pay attention. I typically carve out in the morning on the studio and uh, flop around on a couple of different projects. Uh, one, in this case, being the clock and then this thing, and I, I got sidetracked. This is kind of interesting to... Uh, run in the kitchen, grab something like a piece of pie or something and think, well, man, I'm not going to pull a plate out of the cupboard if there's one in the dishwasher that uh, hasn't been finished. And then you, you bend over, open the door and find out that uh, they're not ripe yet. And this is just a simple matter of continuing to refine uh, pine cone. If you look at a pine cone, they're, they're not difficult to carve, but they've got interesting depths, various different layers in there if you want to get it to look just right. I have noticed something uh, on this. It's not doing it right now, but it, it does do it later on. The, anything white versus dark, the camera tends to track or focus on the light. And a lot of times when I'm burning, the, it'll it'll pick up that smoke. So now I'm just high, uh, coming back to look at the highlights. I haven't decided on painting or whatnot now. Uh, this is a technique that I use. And there you see the original pattern. Grab the orbital sander, make the pattern go away because it's no longer where it started. And drawn, figured three trees, uh, one on the left, one on the right, and a short one through the middle. It's kind of challenging because there's a hole in the simple, in the center, and it, I decided the bottom needed a little bit of round to it. Kind of wanted a raised dial, kind of like a clock face, I guess, since we're uh, all waiting for that clock video to be finished. If anybody wants to finish carving it, let me know. I'll ship it over to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Rounding this over, it's a cuts all burr in there. Like uh, Jordy and Just Carve Rob, I'm, I'm a cuts all saber fan, and then I, I do a lot, use a lot of rubies that they don't because I use the rubies a little bit finer and they're a little bit pricier. Uh, just a different version of a diamond bit. The other bits you see me using here are ceramic type of bits. Uh, I call those stones as opposed to bits. You'll hear me talk about stoning something, and I, I do actually stone a little bit in, into this. Uh, I noticed that Just Carve Rob is using a diamond uh, or a carbide wheel, using it to cut hairs and lines and stuff. I, I don't, and the reason I don't use those is uh, the arc on them seems to be a little bit too large for when I'm, I'm cutting a, a hairline or a, a feather and I will actually use a stone instead of uh, the round. I even got small round diamond bits that kind of come to a V on the end uh, and uh, they don't track as well as, as a stone. A stone I can sharpen the edge of it up and uh, you'll see that a little bit later on here. I just keep going over and over this. Uh, pine trees are interesting, easy to do. Uh, easier to make look cartoonish and I, I really didn't want that to happen in this one uh, you think about it the tree has a round dimension to it a lot of people draw a tree and everything goes to the center and then there's no depth in the center and it makes it look uh, two-dimensional make it look three-dimensional some of those branches and if you've ever tried to paint or paint a pine tree uh, you know that the center of that actually it's easy to draw a branch sticking to the left or the right. It's hard to draw a branch that's pointing straight at you. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. Now here's that stone I'm talking about. Uh, these aren't available here in the U.S. That's a Proxima stone that came from Germany probably 15, 20 years ago. And I bought, you could buy them for a five euro in those days, a package of 10 or something like that. And I still have a few of them around. Uh, I'm slowly killing them, and I'll use that someday, I guess, as an excuse to, to fly over to Germany and goof off and eat some schnitzel and uh, attend a Trottel Mart and that sort of thing, all to buy 
ten dollars worth of carving stones for the next 20 years so I'm coming down with the the flow of, of these uh, I did not mention but I, I did cut it out on the scroll saw not the band saw it was a little bit easier to, to do the scroll saw being actually a larger one I, I will I mentioned on the clock face a scroll saw too but it's more of a it's a hand saw it's, it's really a jeweler saw with a fine blade in it when I get to that point and I'll be cutting uh, in a V block you'll see that later on so I got it kind of roughed out where I want now I want to look at uh, getting a little bit better flow so I come back to the, the wood burning pin And like I was talking about a minute ago, uh, you have to keep in mind that a lot of the flow comes out at you and it's not really evident in that one on the right. It, it might be a little more so on the left, but I'll fix that later on. The center of the tree, the branches come directly at you. And there are three trees with the bottom of this thing, the three trees kind of all meld in together. No rhyme or reason here, just let it happen. It's, it's, it's a lot like painting, painting with a wood burner. I think one of the reasons I like uh, messing around with the wood burner is I, I actually get to see, I, I can see uh, the cut lines and the, the planes when I'm carving but you can't see that on the camera in a lot of cases it, it doesn't show up right unless the lighting and the shadows are just right but with this wood burning uh, it's almost like I antiqued it or highlighted uh, various different portions of it and you can kind of see it already starting to take shape and there's what I was talking about the center of the tree needs to uh, come directly at you I uh, decided the pine cone on the sides needed needles, so throwing those in, they'll get the same process as everything else. Uh, stoned, typically, because uh, they're fine lines, and then uh, wood burn. I, I didn't show the stoning part, but there, it's in there. That's what I was talking about. You can't necessarily see those uh, marks. Now, when you paint that and you antique it or you highlight, that stuff shows up. So. Now it's time to clean up the outside and relief the back just a tad so that it sits on there or sits on the, the face of the dishwasher. Face of the dishwasher is uh, metal. Obviously do the same thing with the fridge. We've got tons of refrigerator magnets, uh, have had for years starting with the standard um, alphabet for the kids and then collected various magnets over the years. The last 10 or 15 years I've been using uh, neodyne magnets. You can buy them in all different sizes and shapes right up to ludicrous size if you're, uh, and they're extremely strong. The only problem with them is that when you stick them on the fridge, the smaller ones uh, are not good for little kids because they're so strong, little kids will swallow them. They're, they're you know, half the size, quarter the size of a dime. There's a larger one right there and there's the circle that I'm starting to cut out. That'll be slightly inset so the, the magnet is flush with the back of the wood. And they're, like I said, extremely strong. So there'll be two on the big plate, one on that center plate, and then I will epoxy those in. But they're not good for little kids uh, because they, they tend to swallow stuff and these things uh, get inside and clamp together and uh, that's bad and uh, you don't want your kid having an operation because they swallowed your cute magnets that are fun to play with. They, I've, I've got a couple hundred of them in different sizes and I use them for various different projects because they do have really strong holding power. The, the big ones are interesting. Uh, ones that are six inches across you have to slide them left to right to get them to split and if you put your finger in there they'd crush your finger 
Uh, that's how strong they are. They use those for generators, solar generators. There's a drill case, metal, and you can see how that's going to work. Up is dishes are good in the center, and down the dishes are not good. And there's a better representation. I don't have the magnets on the big piece yet, but the little one has its magnet epoxied to the back. So dishes are not ready to steal, are ready to steal, or uh, if you're feeling kind, put them in the cupboard and get ready for another load. That means it needs loaded or washed, not loaded and washed. Now, I don't know what else to call this other than a tell. So this is a bonus. You are gonna get to see me paint a little bit. I'm running three colors here. Burnt umber, a hooker's green, and a lighter green. Uh, the paints are Josonia uh, acrylics. I run them fairly thin and use several different washes. In this case, it's, it's the, the, no s technique going on here. I just get the paint thinned down. And I'm, I'm not putting really a thick coat on there. I'm trying to just kind of stain stuff, although the green turns out a little uh, darker than a typical stain. So I think that's burnt umber that's going on now. I, I don't remember. And I'm just getting it down in the cracks. I'm going to take some of this off and highlight. There's the burnt umber again. Now here, here's an interesting, uh, this is just water. And it's got a little bit of a taint from the brown because I've been using it. But I'm wetting the wood so the paint starts to slide into the wood. On, on a lot of the decoys uh, and various different things, I, I, I will seal them and then start painting from the top. But generally, I don't. I use this more of, as a, a stain for the wood than a true paint, I guess. The, the pigment sticks into the wood there. Whereas if you were to seal it, the pigment would float on top of the wood. So here's uh, Hooker's Green. Quick channel change there on the TV. And I'm just trying to get coverage all the way down in here. You're going to see the burn lines through this because this does have a transparency to it. In fact, when you're using this in several different layers uh, on decoys and various different things, that's one of the things I like about the Josonia uh, paints. I've used it for years. And once you, as most of you know, once you get stuck on one thing, it's hard to change. Of course, in the art world, you can go insane and uh, pick various different brands and types of paints and they all act differently and you have to learn new techniques so stick with one for a little while I guess until you've got it mastered and then once you've got it mastered there's no reason to go anywhere else right <laughs> uh, here's a highlight uh, I, I have no idea what color this is puke green if you're doing painting, the hardest thing to do is get a natural looking green. And you, you almost have to mix that up yourself. It's, it's either too green, not green enough, shiny. Uh, something's always wrong with green. If you look in nature. Uh, in nature, green has 15 different shades, all in the same tree. Uh, going from a light gray uh, on up into a green, green, yellow gets insane these are just highlighting on the top I'm not painting down in there that's just the brush is just catching the uh, higher portions I will come back with the darker green the hooker's green and do the edge so there's not much to this project it's a it's a filler I think uh, while I'm going into the other, but it does show the carving process in something different and unique. <coughs> the beauty of this paint is it does wipe off your hands. It typically washes out of your clothes. And it dries fairly quickly. Uh, a lot of times I'll have a uh, hair dryer and we'll dry each layer in between as I go through. So now I've just got some, uh, I don't know, 4-aught steel wool and I took a lot of the 
just kind of brushed over it, highlighted it. Some people would call this antiquing. And then I decided I want a little more depth to show, so I went back in with the burner pin and put in some of the shadows underneath to make it read better. Something I, I don't think you see in here is uh, I do put burnt linseed oil on it. There's the finished project, a bad photograph sitting on the actual dishwasher. Up is good, down is bad, and uh, that's the end of that one. And so stand by for the clock to be finished and some various other things. Uh, looking forward to getting Jordy's bark and see what that looks like. Hey, this has been Ben with Studio on the Lake. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, share. Also support uh, all those other folks out there trying to uh, get into the carving game. Thanks a lot.